possibly the most genetically significant apple that we uh, grow is Ribston Pippin. Uh, Ribston Pippin uh, is the parent of Cox's Orange Pippin and I think you can really see the orange in these. These have ripened beautifully and Julia was just saying she thinks this is the best crop of Ribstons we've ever grown. It's certainly the prettiest and I think the biggest. What the flavour is like is another matter but I'm expecting in this challenging year uh, where we had um, a very late cold spring and then a severe prolonged drought I'm expecting that the fruit we do have is going to be of extremely good flavour and um, sugar content and I, I will say it as a prediction now although none of it has yet been made that the cider uh, the uh, hard cider, the alcoholic cider of um, of this year is going to be um, a vintage, a real special year, making up perhaps for the appalling uh, cider that I made last year, which is really not fit to drink and which I'm making into vinegar. This is, I think, the biggest and the best looking crop of Ribston ever. Well, they're really orange, aren't they? Yeah. And do you know what happens sometimes with these apples is that we, we have a tendency to pick them before they're really ripe because they, they have a tendency to fall yeah. early, don't they? Yeah. Um, I mean, one year you were, uh, if I can speak freely, uh, you were so concerned about them falling that you picked them all before they developed any colour. And they never really, they never really ripened well that year, did they? But these are a, a delight. Well, I've just been eating one that, from the batch that we picked ten days ago. Yeah. And they're already nice to eat now. They're like a really lovely crop. So they've got that crispness to them. Which, you know, even if they didn't taste good, uh, and I'm sure they will. I haven't eaten one yet. Beautiful. I'm just savouring a kid's orange red I've eaten, which was absolutely delightful. Um, people will buy these on the appearance because uh, they're so beautiful. Uh, as I was saying, the kit, the the, um, the Ribston Pippin is um, uh, a genetically remarkable apple. It's the parent of the Cox's Orange Pippin and of many, many others. Cox itself uh, is um, a very effective uh, apple parent. Pips, many of the finest varieties that we have um, came from variety came from apples that were raised from pips planted from a Cox's Orange. Pippin, um, so they would be the grandchildren, the, op the grand offspring of these. One reason why these, these trees are actually doing so well is because there was, they've been given more space. There was a row of trees down here. You can see some of the growth coming back from where the, they were dug out. There was a row down here, and uh, the other side of them, uh, that was a row of Ribston Pippin there, double row. And there was a row of Grant uh, Russet down here. I was more upset to dig this out than I was of any tree I've ever had to dig out. Um, but we realised we had planted the trees too close together. It was, it was a, a struggle every year to control them. And now I've allowed these trees to spread their, spread their arms up, spread their branches out a bit more, and they've reached the size that they're happy with. And um, they've reached the size that they're happy with and uh, they're, they're cropping in a nice balanced way. Looks like codling moth. I'm just going to cut this open, I think. Um, Julia, could you do me a small favour? When you put those apples down, just hold this camera while I cut this open and look inside. So we change from being a video about the... Um, uh, this is still about the river of some Pippin. Yeah, that's pretty typical coddling moth damage, isn't it? Has it just dropped out, may have dropped out, or has it gone into the centre? Yeah, it looks it's a two holes in it, it's probably, it's probably it's barred exited out. It's exited now, yeah. It's exited. Um, 
Before anybody says, well, wouldn't it be a good idea to run chickens underneath your trees? Well, yes, and uh, our predatory fox thinks so as well. He'd be very pleased. The fox, uh, and our next door neighbours uh, run chickens, and the fox kills about one every week, doesn't he? Oh, even though they, even though they live on site, have a fierce dog, and have fences up, so it's just a real problem. Um, we, we we can't realistically keep chickens. Uh, we, we we use pest control, which I've mentioned elsewhere, minimum. But yeah, I mean, you can the occasional. Um, Apple with a maggot, and I've seen a few today. But hey, most of these are really beautiful, and uh, yeah, this is the uh, finest um, crop of um, the finest crop, I would say, of, of this wonderful uh, old English apple variety, originally raised in Yorkshire, um, uh, about 250 years ago, and um, of all of our apples which ought not to be allowed to go extinct. Ribston Pippin has to be one of the top of the list. And I know that uh, uh, a good friend in Italy received some um, uh, cyan wood from me uh, a year or two years ago, Ribston Pippin. And the tree has grown successfully and he's enjoyed the first fruit from it this year. So that's a really good thing. That's uh, one of the things that we, yeah, yeah, that's why we planted the orchard, that's why we uh, started this Heritage Apple Project, to keep these marvellous varieties alive, and the best way to keep them alive is not by, um, you know, passing laws or uh, anything, but by encouraging people to understand and appreciate and value their beauty, and, um, and to grow and enjoy the apples. Ribston Pippin.